And joining me in studio now is Dr. Patrick Amot, the Acting Director General, Ministry of Health. Thank you so much for making time, Dr. Ari. 20 yes. days down the line, why has the government been unable to resolve the doctor's strike? No, oh, thanks, Trevor, for having me to be able to have this conversation. How I wish that we had this conversation during a time of industrial harmony, when we can be very objective as to how we discuss how the health workforce in the country can be utilized for the best uh, outcomes of the health of the Kenyan people. However, that notwithstanding, the government has extended an olive hand in terms of uh, dialogue with the union. But we also remember that there were instructions that were given by Labor and Employment Court, and uh, the orders were very, very specific. Uh, one of the issues that the judge, Honorable Judge, raised was that these issues are so fundamental, and some of them are chronic in nature, and therefore they needed the whole of nation approach. And that meeting duly took place on 21st of March, and a subsequent meeting took place on the 27th of March to be able to address this issue. Uh, and one of the positions of the government was that we need to be able to comply to the court orders so that uh, when we have our discussions, we can be able to discuss in an atmosphere of uh, friendship, courtesy, and respect for the law. He who comes to court must come with clean hands. And that is the basis of why things have not progressed. However, even if you have looked at the press release by the head of public service, it is very, very clear that the national government, per se, is seized of the matters under its ambit in terms of the issues that were raised by the union and is ready to address those issues. One of the things, as clearly said in your statement, is that we have paid outstanding salary arrears, basic salary arrears. KMPD arrears. says you haven't. I the national government, and, and that, that, that is even with the conciliator. That matter has been agreed. It is sorted out between the national government and the KMPDU members at the national government. Money has been paid to the last cent. I believe, if I talk to the people in accounts in the ministry, it is the union that members that owe the ministry 81,000 shillings. But that notwithstanding, there are still other issues that the counties need to be able to address individually, because even counties have different uh, different uh, facets of this problem. Yeah. Different countries have different facets. Yeah. Some counties have paid to the fullest. Others have not made any attempt, have not paid. Yeah. And therefore, that is what the head of public service is trying to address by saying, yeah. we are aware that the countries are at various stages to be able to address this problem. You say that you, uh, who you comes to court must come with clean hands. You've mentioned here that you're going to pay this according to the guidelines issued by the Salaries and Remuneration Commission, SRC, which in itself recommended a reduction of 91% of the remuneration, which is contrary to the 2017 CBA, which you all agreed upon. So who has dirty hands here? Salaries and Remuneration Commission is a constitutional commission. And uh, when the Ministry of Health approached the National Treasury for funding to be able to support the internship program, the National Treasury gave a response that we need to be able to have a sustainable system to ensure that the internship program does not uh, become sustainable in, in the long run. Based on that and the numbers that we had, remember, Trevor, for example, the number of doctors over the last 10 years has tripled from 213 in 2013 to 883. The number of clinical officer diploma holders has increased eightfold. The number of nurses, Bachelor of Science nurses, has increased fivefold. The resources available to the ministry to be able to support this people has not increased in tandem. Okay. And therefore, we must be able to have a discussion and see how we can be able to address this matter. Okay. And uh, calling me now is Dr. Davji Atela, who's the KMPD Secretary General on phone. Davji, have you, ref have you received your payments? Uh, there, there, there's no payments that has been done by the government regarding the collective bargaining agreements of 2017-2021. We have had a meeting and discussion of this for the whole of, 20, the whole of 2023. And it was very clear that the government was uh, a doctor's 1.2 billion from 2017, September, to 2021. And then another 1.8 from 2021 to date, meaning 3 billion. What the ministry did was to change the entire of doctors in 
the ministry. Okay, let's fix that line with Davji and then get back to him in just a bit. I don't know that thing we are not very clear, but he says that they have not received that money. Davji is not a, an employee yeah. of the national government. So you don't expect us to be able to pay him when he works for Nakuru government. But he's the one who represents the KMPDU, Kenya Medical Practitioner Dentist Union, which is the governing body yes, with the doctors. But he works so he wouldn't in know if his members have received the money, wouldn't he? I've said clearly that the members who work at the national level have received their payments. They, and, DG, the reason why I keep pushing on this is because just earlier on they said that you walked out of the negotiations as KMPDU. Is, there, is that true or not? Uh, the chair would be able to answer that question. The chair of the whole of nation uh, approach. You were not there. I was not chairing the meeting. But were you part of the meeting? Because we saw you in the videos. There, did you walk yes, out? Yes, yes, yes. Did you walk out or not? Uh, the chair of the negotiating committee called the meeting gave citations regarding the court instructions, and we said that if you are not in compliance with the court, then there's uh, there's no way we are going to have a honest discussion. So who should comply first? Should you comply with the 2017 CBA or should they comply with the current, with the recent court? To the best of my knowledge, the national government has complied in terms of payment of basic salary for the doctors to the CBA of 2017. However, there are aspects yeah. that will really require a long-term approach because parts of the CBA require substantial financial outlays that cannot be addressed in one day. Okay. One of the other issues that is coming up is the clinical officers. They too are on strike, day two. Is there progress with that? Yes, we had a discussion with them yesterday and we also had a meeting today with them and we believe that we can be able to address the fun fundamental issues that they're raising. Okay. I think we have Davji on phone again. Let's hear what he was saying. Davji, earlier on, we couldn't hear you so clearly. The government says that you have, that your doctors, not you specifically, have been paid their dues so far. I'm saying that uh, the doctors have been paid their dues. Uh, the CBA 2017-2021 has not been implemented, particularly in the basic salary areas. And uh, we know calculation, the government holds the doctors uh, 1.2 billion between 2017 July to 2021. September and from 2021 September to 2024, they owe them about 1.8 billion. So the total money that is owed is 3 billion. What ministry has done is the uh, changing of the tires from 21 tires that, uh, that was there initially to 17 tires, which county on the country has not done. So the money has not been paid for all the doctors across the country. That's the first thing. The second thing is that the government is directly violating the collective bargaining agreement in the name of budgeting. We see that CBO signed in 2017. The budget of the country at that point was about 2.2 trillion. So it behooves us to see that in 2024, the government wants to say they have bigger numbers when the budget actually has gone 4.7 trillion. The other thing is that, but this is very, which does not make any sense, is that the population of the country is continuously increasing. It must correlate to the number of things that also takes place. That, that does not give the government any autonomy or any powers to, to unilaterally change an agreed agreement okay. where they are the ones who suggested to the treasury, to, to, to the SRC reduction of the salaries by 91% and then the SRC approved the same without the animal city. This is impunity. And but, it means that there's no doctor salary, yeah. not the medical officers, not the consultants, not the pharmacists, not the dentists. Because once a CBA has been signed, it can only be altered when the parties sit down and agree. But Davji, so, Davji, hold on one second. Where do you draw the line in terms of the role of the national government and the county governments? They say they have held their end of the bargain and the county governments are in different stages of holding their end of the bargain. Shiva, we, 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 we are taxed by one body. All the money from the treasury goes to, money goes to the treasury. It, it will not... Today, when you're not paying salaries in the county, salaries are like Kenya does not pay salaries for February, uh, from January for doctors. Like some counties have delayed for two, three months. What they say is that they're not going to release of money from the exchequer, which okay. is from the treasury. So the, county, the government, are, is, uh, today they decide that, yes, health is devolved, so you're in the county. Tomorrow they say, no, universal health care. Yeah. So we have community health promoters who are being run by national. So this issue of, of, of counties and national comes when it fits them. When they want to frustrate uh, the, the, the doctors, when they want okay. to uh, disown the CBA that have been signed, when they want the facts to continue. All right. Because ideally, even the, the, what is reported in that letter by the head of public service was not discussed. 
we get we at a meeting uh, at the, at the subcommittee was it was to Trevor, but it's a fact that all right. And then in all right, the WG. next meeting where that was represented, thank you, WG. Out. Thank you, Davji. Yes. It's a fact that we have two levels of government, the national government and yep. the county government. And the responsibility of paying salaries, stipends, and allowances for employees of the counties rests squarely with the counties after they have received yep. their share of the revenue from the Division of Revenue Bill or Act. Yeah. So I cannot be held responsible for paying uh, health care workers in Mandera County because I don't even have that payroll with me. Okay. I don't even have that money with me. So why has it been so difficult to resolve this? Because the unions are saying that you're frustrating them, you're walking out, you say that the county government should hold their end, you have held your end. Trevor, let me give you a historical perspective. Uh, we, real, we, we, we are alive, alive to the fact that health workforce is perhaps the most important element of any healthcare system because uh, countries dedicate 60 to 70 percent of their total health expenditure to health workforce. It is also the living element of any healthcare system. Yeah. Just before we went to Kericho for the launch of uh, universal health coverage, we had a discussion with the unions, the professional associations, the regulatory bodies, civil society, to be able to have a view of our health ecosystem and how we can be able to achieve universal health coverage. Mm -hmm. We came up with 17 action points that later became what we call the Kericho Declaration. And we wanted to be able to address this thing holistically and once and for all, yeah. not the band aid kind of mechanism that we have done in the past. And remember, this discussion even started earlier than that in 2022, February. We had a conference in Mombasa that yeah. was uh, officially opened by then President Uru Kenyatta to be able to look at the health workforce in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, some of the things that we raised in the Kericho Declaration are the things that the union has brought up as their grievances. However, in terms of delivery of universal health coverage, we had four pillars. One, the health workforce, health financing. You have seen the fundamental change that you have uh, made at National Health Insurance Fund. Yeah. Now to be able to make it social health authority. Health products and technology. You have also seen the changes at KEMSA. Our order field rate has increased. And, and, and then the other one is the digital superhighway, which we are going to use now as we start yeah. the registration of people for sure. We packed this one of human resources for health because it was going to be the most intricate, the most difficult one to, to handle. Unfortunately, the strike has come at this particular time. Yeah. And now we have to handle it during a crisis. We wanted to handle it during peacetime when we can be able to be very objective in our thought process, in our discussions. But that notwithstanding, here we are in this particular space. And that is why the whole of nation approach has distilled these things. What belongs, belongs to the national government, yeah. what belongs to the county government, what is concurrent, and what approach do we use? There are also perennial issues yeah. that the union has continued to raise year in, year out. Delayed salary payments, a requirement for establishment of a health service commission, yeah. the numbers that don't meet the norms. And we have done everything possible. Like now, Trevor, I can tell you, we have done what we call health labor market analysis. Mm -hmm. We know what is in the pipeline in terms of production. Yeah. We know what we can be able to absorb. We know how much we can be able to retain. We know our gap going to 2031. As at now, we can only be able to meet 75% of our needs. Okay. We have a gap of 60,000 healthcare workers. Okay. By 2031, we'll have a deficit of 114,000 healthcare workers. Remember, WHO clearly says that by 2030, yeah. the entire global community will have a shortage of 10 million healthcare workers. 45% okay. of that is going to be Sub-Sahara -Sub Africa. All right. So we are seized of the numbers. We are seized of the figures that we require. Okay. And it's important to have this conversation. Dr. Mott, stay with me because you're still going to talk about the clinical officers uh, getting on strike day two. 